Hello and welcome, vegan savages, to another episode of the Vegans Podcast. I'm here in Berlin on my pallet bed because Axel is back. He's in the other room and doing something and I'm so happy he's back. The vlogs will be insanely fun. We have great plans and it's so hot in Berlin. I'm sweating like crazy. Especially my bedroom is so hot because sun is shining in all day. But I have my little lifesaver next to me. I hope the noise doesn't get uh, uh, picked up that badly, but it's quite quiet. It's a tiny uh, fan and it saves my life because some wind is just feeling so good. And yeah, let me fill you into my environment before we jump into just talking because that's what this podcast is about. Just the weekly vegans rambling podcast where i just talk about whatever and um i got a new microphone actually too and uh in the next one hopefully axel is joining me and then we can both have our own microphone hopefully the sound is even a bit better um yeah i will see but they're quite heavy i don't know if i will travel with them um so what else i wanted to wash my hands but the water isn't running Sometimes this apartment complex is like, oh, no water, no one is selling, uh, telling, uh, is saying anything, no warning. You just, you just want to shower or you want to flush the toilet. Well, there's a always like one to two flushes left, but it's like out of the blue, and I'm like, okay. So, and if you're watching on YouTube, there is a visual for you, double, kind of double biceps because I'm still holding the microphone for you, <clears throat> and I'm drinking my licorice tea. How can you drink tea on? A day like today when, when you have 33 degrees, well, because I let it cool down. That's the secret. Either do a tea and let it cool down or just cold steep it overnight or just for a couple of hours because you don't need hot water, actually. You can just uh, cold steep it. And um, I mostly use hot water because then the flavor gets more intense. But for green tea, I love to cold steep it overnight because then it doesn't get bitter. Because usually when you make green tea and you let it soak for already over then like two to three minutes, it gets more and more bitter. But if you don't use hot water, if you use normal temperature, room temperature water or put it in the fridge, it doesn't get bitter. It's even a bit healthier because more antioxidants um, remain are not destroyed by the heat and it also has less caffeine um yeah that's why i love cold steep green tea normal green tea if it's soaked for too long they say shit i don't like because it's bitter all right <clears throat> i asked you on instagram at vegan strengths go follow me there if you don't do it yet and ask you for topics i should just talk about so let's see what you got for me best things to do in berlin Hmm, what do you do in Berlin, the capital of Germany? Actually, you see it on a daily, so watch my vlogs. And actually, I did a couple of vlogs where I really discover Berlin. I need to do like a playlist that people find them uh, more easy or easily. I think it's a better, better, better word. Um, but what I would do in a nutshell, get obsessed with World War II documentaries because I find, especially World War II, I find it so fascinating how humans could be so intrigued, is that the right word, just so um, blinded by one person and follow him to such a degree where they would infiltrate other countries and do horrible shit. Um, and then, yeah, you get obsessed with World War II, you watch a lot of documentaries, and then you come to Berlin and then you go to all the sites. And it's insane. Oh, basically, all of World War II the, uh, was happening in Berlin. And how it ended, it was in Berlin. How destroyed the Brandenburger Tor, in English, um, Brandenburger Gate was. And the whole street, it's called Straße des 16. or 17. Juni, something like that. I think 17. Um, was so destroyed and then you see how we rebuild it and there are just so many pieces left of the wall which you can see which you can touch and um, museums and i just yeah if you're into that i just find world war ii so fascinating so 
uh, I would do that. Um, but then, yeah, for example, if you're vegan, check out the vegan restaurants. Check out, I have like four or five full day of eating outs in Berlin and go watch them and then go to the restaurants that uh, sound good to you or get the hap uh, the app Happy Cow and go to the restaurants that are closed. Mm, Berlin has just so much history. So, and just also so much nature. Go to Tiergarten. It's like, it's one of the biggest parks. It's in the middle of the city. It's like Central Park, but I believe it's bigger. And Berlin is just so free. For example, in Tiergarten, in the middle of Berlin, there's a big... Um, a big lawn where people just lay naked. They just sunbath naked and it's great. I do it all the time. So you probably find me there laying naked, reading a book. <laughs> I honestly, like one or two years ago, I did it every single day in the summer because it just feels so good when the sun is touching you everywhere. So yeah, and I still do it. Mm, yeah, and it depends what you're into. You Like you can go to crazy parties in Berlin. There's so many events happening. Mm. And what I mm, what I also would recommend, like what I did with my mother when I moved here six or seven years ago, we went on these hop on, hop off, hop on, hop, hop off buses. They're not even pricey. It's not like New York City. Berlin is actually super affordable. And you just, um, yeah, see the main spots of Berlin Get a great overview in a relaxing way where you can just lean back and enjoy Berlin and listen to the program where they tell you everything about the things you're passing or just enjoy and watch and just hop off wherever you want and explore and then hop on again. So that's about that. But it depends what you're into. In Berlin, you find everything. <clears throat> toxic masculinity especially in fitness industry yeah that is huge it's like for example it's called FIBO in Germany it's a fitness and bodybuilding expo and people who are often into fitness especially into bodybuilding and often especially the guys or the girls who take drugs they are on st who are on steroids They get so uh, ego-driven, of course, not all of them. It's uh, You cannot make broad statements, but many. And if you don't have a bigger movement like vegans, like we have, where we all work together for something, that's why I love the vegan movement, because all the guys who are into fitness and bodybuilding as well, I get so along with them because we both have a a goal together a bigger goal that is bigger than us so we're not like um oh i don't give you shout outs and um i compare all the time like who is more followers and i don't even talk to you this and that no we're like everyone who fights for the animals who who is like fighting for a better world we love that we support that we help each other and no matter if you have 200,000 subs more or less we still collab because we like each other I mean I mean if we like each other but in the non-vegan fitness and bodybuilding industry people are so ego often of course not always as I say often so ego driven and just um, so focusing on the on the surface it's like if you have less muscles than me it's like oh bro do you even lift And if you have more muscles than me, then, oh, he's taking steroids for sure. And if you have less followers, then, oh, I don't even collab with you. I don't give you a shout out. And if you have more followers than me, then like, oh, come, let's collab, bro. And um, and I think like it's it's a side effect of taking steroids. Uh, in German, it's called, how I would translate it, it's like the God syndrome, where you just think you're, you're like God. You are God and you're so much more worth than other humans and it's such a toxic thinking where you think then that you are better than others and only because you have a good body and maybe reach many people on social media you think you, like you're something better and that re that leads you to such a lonely depressed place 
no one wants to be in. And that's why I I'm so happy. I see so many people coming out like, hey, I was this guy. I was so ego driven, but I felt lonely. I felt empty. I felt depressed. I was sitting in my big luxurious apartment, but I had no friends because I'm an asshole. So I'm happy many people get out of this toxic masculinity fitness place and um, find something bigger than them that they actually want to leave the planet better than they found it, like eating a low impact healthy diet, like a plant based diet uh, where you don't needlessly kill so many animals and uh, don't waste so many precious resources and actually live a healthy, compassionate, delicious plant-based lifestyle so that's why i just loved the vegan vibes i the first time i really experienced that is when i was at veg fest and that was the first time i was surrounded by much bigger vegan fitness influencers than myself like nimai delgado john venus uh, simnet nutrition um maddie um and so on And, and they were all so cool, you cannot imagine. They were all so down to earth and so friendly and shouted me out in the videos and I did the same because we're fighting for a bigger cause than ourselves and we're so thankful for each other, for the work we're doing and that we're spreading the message. So I loved it so about the vegan whatever community and even fitness and bodybuilding community where it's usually often a bit more ego-driven Mostly not in the vegan um, community. So I love that. And that's why <clears throat> I'm crushing the stereotype. Like I'm a fairly muscular guy. But I don't behave like many of the others at all. They're like, oh, I have muscles. I be someone. I act like super alpha male. No, I act childish because I am. No one has figured out shit. No one has figured out life. And acting like an adult, taking everything seriously, that is not me. And I just love being childish in front of the camera because that's who I am. And I'm not trying to be a tough guy, tough alpha male. Hey, I'm so cool. Chicks, hit me up. No, I'm not like that at all, you see. That's why I have the high-pitched voice all the time because I love to make a high-pitched voice because it's so not fa uh, so not masculine because let's crush this masculine ego-driven nonsense of being someone i'm better than you no we all have male female energy in us we're all kind of the same and i just don't act what i'm maybe supposed to i'm just freely who i am i don't act like my age i'm just acting like the per uh, i'm just i'm just friending here where am i going with this let's just go to another question i think you got it <clears throat> is the microphone actually good it sounds yeah if not i go back to and that's why i love the the zoom um where i plug in the microphone because the zoom is already a microphone but it's so minimalist so i can easily travel with that because the two new microphones in the cable is actually heavy so yeah but hopefully the sound is a bit better <laughs> someone someone said lemons okay let's talk about lemons today i had half a lemon in my nice cream and the other half of lemon in my smoothie both together with the peel which tastes fantastic but i actually don't like lemon with peel in my nice cream too much uh, i like it more in my smoothie but it's still good it's just oh makes it so lemon rich so there you have it we talked about lemons hmm What happened with Axel? Axel is back. He's in the other room. He was in Vienna um, attending the climate conference. And now he's back. And we probably go to Vienna next month together. Because he needs to go back. And I was like, hey, I want to join. I want to show the vegan savages Vienna and myself. I've never been there. So when you're done next month with shooting your documentary, I come and we hang out. Hmm. Uh, he healing your relationships with food slash adjust to larger portions mm, sorry I don't get the question 
Mm. Would you live a different life if you had kids? Of course. Kids are such a life changer where you live. I, I mean, <laughs> take this all with a pinch of salt and big disclaimer. I don't have kids. I never had kids. So I cannot speak of experience, but I can experience, uh, but I can speak of what I experienced seeing other people like my sister having kids and friends and just seeing it on social media. Um, but it changes your life that someone is there and it's not like a pet which you just need to go out with your dog and play a bit and give give him or her food and that's basically it no especially the first years your child depends so greatly on you and it's your your life just becomes before that currently my life is like i am in control what i want to do but if you have a kid your kid decides what you do your kids are sleeping or oh, cool now i can work on something oh your kid Where, uh, your your baby I mean wakes up and is crying okay what why is he or she crying okay food uh, walking drinking I mean hopefully when it's a baby the mother should breastfeed her so for mothers it's even way tougher because they have the bond and they breastfeed multiple times per day and night so your sleep cycle is fucked for the first years unfortunately mostly uh, um, yeah but I don't know shit because I never had a kid but I just know your life will never be the same I mean it never is everything is changing constantly every single second we're a new person but I mean in a big way where you just uh, your kid basically I mean depends what kind of father you are you can just uh, go and uh, love yourself and go away and be a shitty dad and just pay for your kid i mean but if you would be a good father what i would recommend uh then your life will be completely different uh yeah i <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about because i don't have a kid so and i don't want kids currently but everything could change so that's about that Why communication? How weird does that sound if I <laughs> blow into the mic? Sorry, that's probably so annoying. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just figuring out the new microphone. Why communication is the key of everything, of relationships, friendships, work, etc. You are damn right. Communication is so the key. And why it is? Because... And that is a big rule I adopted years ago and I want that you are a true vegan savage and adopt the same. And it is that pay attention. You're paying attention? That's good. Don't make assumptions. Because you are mostly wrong. You're like, oh, he's probably feeling bad and he's thinking this about me. And your head is constantly occupied by making assumptions what other people think about you and how you might have impacted them and that they got it wrong and now they hate you and this and that and you're making up a huge story and it turned out they didn't care they didn't notice they didn't bother at all and you just lost all that headspace and you just worried and you were stressed and you were anxious because of nothing so don't make assumptions but talk honestly if there's something bothering you like oh i think she's mad or he's mad talk about it like hey are you are you good you have something you you worry about or hey i feel like you the energy is a bit weird is there something you want to talk about honest communication in a loving way listen truly listen and truly tell each other what you what you feel if something is bothering you Don't hold it back. Don't have vicious thoughts like, oh, that is bothering me. How can he never do the dishes? Tell him or her. Be honest, like, hey, but in a nice way. Hey, um, I just, you know, I love a clean kitchen. And if they're always dishes, they always stick out to me. And can we just make a simple rule that we immediately put it in the dishwasher or just clean it up? I mean, it goes so much faster. And then we can use the blender multiple times per day. Just, And then the other one is like, oh, Yeah, of course. Uh, I didn't know you were that was bothering you. Yeah, I could easily do it. Or, or if he or she's like, oh no, fuck you, then maybe reconsider that uh, relationship because people who love you, they also care about you, 
and respect you. And if you're, if something is bothering you and they don't respect that and they don't care about that, then they probably don't love you. So, um, yeah, and that's great because if you honestly communicate, you find out, do these people unconditionally love me? Yes or no? <clears throat> um, should I bring this example? No, we keep that for another time. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's why communication is key. Alrighty, right. Ah, feeling so preachy. I love it in my element. Preachy vegan. Uh, do you want a relationship right now? That is a good question. Let me drink a sip of licorice tea. Ah, do I want a relationship? I mean, I have lots of ongoing relationships, mostly with males, though. But these are all friendships. Also, Scorpio, mind, we have a friendship relationship, but I know what you mean. You are talking about a girlfriend. Um, I just, I'm open to love. And I recommend the same to you. Always stay open for everything. Let everything openly um flow into your life that you don't refuse abundance i always allow abundance and i want to have a abundance of love and if there's a great girl coming i don't have the mindset like oh i'm too busy for girls i'm hustling i want to reach those numbers before that i want to really focus on my work no i fo focus on my work but i all i'm always open for love so if there's a great girl and we vibe and we like each other then of course i'm open for a relationship But I'm not big on these terms like calling it now we're in a relationship, this and that. Because every relationship is different. And I just love great and loving and unconditional loving relationships. And um, if something is that like to a girlfriend, then I'm so open for that. But I don't force it into existence. Don't force it. Don't force love. Because there ain't anything coming good out of that. There are just some Coca-Cola relationships coming out of that where you force it. But... You want to have water relationships where it's just, oh, what am I talking about? That sounds too spiritual. I don't know where that came from. I think I heard it in a video of, who was it? I think, he, oh yeah, he's called Infinite Waters. Uh, I don't watch his videos anymore. He's too much into spirituality. And yeah, it's just that when people talk about, they just make shit up and claim them as facts without any sources that that's something i don't like so but yeah i'm open to love um so many questions careers uh, career changes pursuing passion etc who i talked about it all the time a lot all day long so let's talk about something else um Sorry, there's just so many questions and I don't know what to talk about. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I already talked about it in my vlog today. Do I eat one day like vegan dog kiwi? Um, maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Um... your fitness journey and learning how to eat intuitively to gain weight? Pooh, that's a long question. I don't know if I'm capable of talking about that. It's just so hard in here. Just want to watch Vikings. <laughs> oh, I just want to have an aircon. But you know, getting a proper aircon is so expensive. Because, uh, what is it called? Let me look that up. Uh, if you want to have a proper aircon that is then built into the wall so it goes outside, you need to have a framework around your apartment complex. Since I'm living in the highest floor, building a framework uh, for that costs like 100,000, I think they told me. <laughs> and I was on the phone with them. I was like, 100,000? And they were like, yeah, just for the framework. I was like, okay, I'm good. YouTube money isn't in abundance here yet so i call you later 
<laughs> and then I got this um, this portable aircon, which was also pricey, 400 euros. But it sucked. It only cooled like two degrees in only one room, two to four degrees. And I made a video about it on my German YouTube channel. And it's popping. It popped last summer. And now that it's that hot again, it's popping again. It had like, last summer it had like, 25,000 views and now I just checked it and it did, it's at 44,000 views and yep yeah. so I think that's it there was another weekly vegans rambling podcast where I just ramble about whatever hopefully next time I'm joined by Axel or another friend oh I definitely get Benny on it yeah Oh yeah, but I will travel with Benny a lot. So when I'm traveling with Benny, I get Benny on here. I get Nico on here. And I just ramble each each week at least one time. So we have a consistency on my podcast because I love it. I love to talk to you. And leave me just questions in the YouTube comments. That's a good place. Then the video also get ranked better. But the visuals don't get that many. I mean, it depends. Like when I talk with Axel, it has like almost... 3k views so that's a lot but most of my views are coming via podcast meaning itunes and spotify and this and that so if you don't know honey my podcast is also on all podcast apps like uh, itunes spotify i just said that okay anything else to talk about um yeah i think next week we do a um podcast together with Axel and then I asked you on my Instagram story for topics so you can already think about stuff we shall talk about and let's ask real questions I like I love to be real get into juicy topics like talk about whatever like we today talked about masculinity or sex or whatever so yeah think about questions you want to pick my and Axel and my other friend's brain on and we shall talk about that. So thank you so much for listening and maybe also watching. I see you here on YouTube tomorrow because I upload every single day. Peace. Eat your chickpeas. I'm gonna post now and then make dinner. Dinner and I'm gonna eat chickpeas because I love them. Am I totally oversharing here? Oh, I just don't want to move just too comfortable it's so hot i feel like i'm melting do i complain too much but i think <coughs> okay here's the thing for example when i did my fast i was complaining quite a lot but i just want to be honest you know i want to tell you how i feel and i had no energy and that sucked and i just was feeling super hungry and that sucked and that's just honest and of course i always can suck it up and be a uh, like don't complain at all I, I and and i do that but for things like experiment i want to share that and i want to share how i feel but is it complaining i think that's just sharing because i'm still like i'm not impacted by that in a negative way like oh that sucks it's so hard life sucks no i'm i'm one of the most privileged guys ever the weather is amazing i'm enjoying like crazy but my apartment is just super hot and i tell you that so uh yeah um i think there's a big difference between complaining in a bad way and complaining in a good way where you're just sharing how you honestly feel because i can always be like oh i'm so positive and i am but they're just things that are bothering me because it's life and i want to talk about them like hey that sucks but i'm not impacted by them but it still sucks and i, I talk about that um yeah let me know your thoughts about it should i never talk about anything that is slightly complainerish or should I just be honest and talk about things, things that also suck in bad moments? A true being savage like myself hardly has bad days, only bad moments, but I don't let bad moments conquer my day. At the end of the day, I'm thankful for so many great things that happened today and I focus on them and I acknowledge things that weren't that great. And, uh, but that's uh, just a couple of moments. But at the end of the day, the day was good. Unless something really fucked up happened, like, ugh, don't let me go there, like, my mom died, then of course that's a bad day, but, you know, normal days, I have maybe a couple of bad moments, but overall, days are great, so, oh, I'm so breached, you didn't already end the podcast, okay, see you, peace out, I love you, mwah.